It's a terrible thing to wake up from a nightmare. But suppose you have a nightmare you can't wake up from because you aren't asleep. It happens to me in this story on Theater 5. A story called, just what it is, A Nightmare. I was only trying to help Judy. Well, now she's carrying on as if... Look, she's upset, of course. And... Oh, of course. And she's been drinking. You can say that again. He tore my dress. Now, Judy, we're going to put a stop to this right now. I'm going to call the police. Uh, it uh, sounds like somebody already has, Peach. Uh, I mean, Mr. Evans. Good. But not good, man. Bad. What? Sergeant, if you'll let me explain this from the beginning. Your name? Charles Evans. Address? 317 East Andover. Now, as I was saying... Occupation? Sergeant. History teacher at Coolidge High. Now, Sergeant... You... Married? No. Age? Sergeant, I... 34. Okay. Now, your story is... You... It is not my story. It's the truth. Now, this young lady here... You know her? Of course I know her. She's one of my students. This boy, too. Her parents know she was out with you. She was not out with me. Now, Sergeant, are you going to listen to what I have to say or not? The kid said she was out with you. I can't believe it. Do you have any reason to lie? Well, it must be the shock. Whoever attacked her must her up considerably. I can see that. And she's been drinking. She says you got her drinking. She's out of her mind. Sergeant, have I been drinking? You don't look that way. But that don't prove anything. You ever been in trouble before? No. And I'm not in trouble now. Well, I'd say you were. Sergeant, can't you get Judy in here? Let me talk to her. Now, she's had time to calm down, and I'm sure she can straighten this out. She probably doesn't have any real idea of what she said when the officer brought us in. She was hysterical and in a state of shock. Okay. Then the girl in. The boy, too. Cigarette? No, thanks. Well, don't smoke either. I didn't say that. Oh, come in. Come in. Now, young man. Uh, Philip Talmadge, sir. Okay. Well, sit there. And uh, young lady. Judy McIntyre. Mr. Evans, I'm terribly sorry. I really am. Oh, thanks goodness. Now we can make some sense out of this. I'm sorry this had to happen. I, I, I know you didn't mean to. I mean, well... Gosh, I, I suppose I never thought of you as a man. I mean, well, uh, <laughs> history is such a dry subject, isn't it? And, well, I, I just didn't know you'd turn out to be so sexy. Judy, what in the name of heaven are you talking about? Sergeant, I came home and uh, I... From where? <laughs> well, from doing some work in my office at the school. Anybody see you there? I don't know. Not that I know of. Now, listen. 
I came home, I got out of the car, I heard a girl scream out and cry for help. I ran over, and when I got there, she was alone, still screaming and crying out and looking the way you see her now. I, I tried to calm her down. I asked her if she was all right. Did she know who it was that attacked her? She said she didn't, and then she began crying on again. Now, I was trying to quiet her down when Phil came here running up. Now, that is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Um, <clears throat> maybe you ought to give him the benefit of the doubt, Sergeant. Doubt? Well, uh, the way you tell it, maybe that's the way it happened. I don't know. I only know what I saw. Judy was sure putting up a big struggle. Now, why would she be doing that if Teach, uh, I mean Mr. Evans, was only trying to help her? I mean, it doesn't make sense, does it? None of this makes sense. Now, Judy... I want you to think back very carefully over what really happened to you tonight. Now, this ain't the classroom, Mr. Evans. Judy, suppose you tell me what happened, and I want the truth to know. Oh, Sergeant, I I'm really sorry. I really am. I, I mean, I didn't have any idea anybody would make such a fuss. Can't we just forget it? Forget it? You claim a man attacks you, beats you up, tears your clothes half off you, and you want to forget it. Well... Maybe it was partly my fault. I, I mean, well, I don't want to sound conceited, but, well, <laughs> the fellows all say I'm tough, you know, cool, you know, with it. And, well, maybe I said something or looked at him some way, and, well, <laughs> he got the wrong idea. And then, well, he, he got himself so worked up he couldn't help it. I mean, well, everybody understands that kind of thing, don't they? I mean, not that it was right what he did, but, well, I've always admired him so as a teacher, and couldn't we just forget it? Judy, in the name of heaven, No, I... we can't just forget it. You're a minor. Evans, I'm not going to book you on any charges just yet, but uh, I hope you'll agree to remain in voluntary custody. Sergeant, I... Well... All right, if you say so. Hmm. You kids will stay here till your parents come. And uh, when they get here, I want to see them. Judy. Oh, Mr. Evans, I, I'm sorry. I really am. Now, Judy, why are you doing this to me? Why? Oh, Mr. Evans, I... <laughs> I don't know what's the matter with me. I guess I'm so tired. Judy, I... Why? Did you say why? Why would she do a thing like that? Why? Well, your attorney, that's what I've got to figure out if I'm going to help you. Wouldn't she give any explanation? Wouldn't or couldn't. She was hysterical, giggling anyway. I could have, oh, I could have wrung her neck. Well, can you think of any reason why? No. And I've wrecked my brains trying to. Well, there must be some reason. It doesn't make any sense otherwise. It certainly wouldn't make sense to a judge. Jim, how do you think it looks for me? I don't know, Charlie. It's their word, Phil's and Judy's, against yours. And Judy's appearance. It would help if we had a witness, but we don't. At least we don't so far, and I'm still working on it. That and anybody who might have seen Judy earlier in the evening. What about her parents? <laughs> Just what you might expect. All they know is that she was out. They didn't know who with. They said they thought she was probably at the library. Probably. Well, I guess they're pretty upset. Actually, I don't think they'll press any charges. I get the feeling they're pretty leery about anything Judy might do or say. But in any case, we've got to know what's behind all this. Maybe she's protecting somebody. Somebody who attacked her? Well, herself, then. Maybe the fella didn't attack her. Maybe she led him on a little, and then when things went too far, she got scared and started screaming for help to, well, to make it look like an attack. Well, then why accuse you? Why not the fella she was with? I don't know. Maybe he's her boyfriend. I've checked that. Her only boyfriend is her steady, Phil. Phil? Yeah. Didn't you know? No. Well, I guess that knocks that. He couldn't have been fooling around with her without getting messed up himself, and he wasn't. Funny he happened to be so close at hand, isn't it? 
He doesn't live anywhere near there. Yeah, I... Well, I didn't realize... Exactly. That's why the most important thing for us to figure out is why. I don't get you. Well, hasn't it occurred to you that this whole business might have been staged for your benefit? But why? That's exactly what I mean. Why? Some grudge, maybe. What kind of a student is she? Fair. Not good, not bad. No problem of failing? No. No run-in of any kind in class? I mean, embarrassing her in front of the class, say, because she didn't know an answer? No. I've never had any trouble at all with her like that way. Or Phil either. Ah. Does she have a crush on you? I've never gotten that impression. It could be that. And if she felt you slighted her or were laughing at her and she wanted to get back at you... I, I don't think so, Jim. She isn't the type... She's always with a flock of boys, steady or not. Mm. Now, definitely not the shy, sensitive, adoring type. No, I don't think it's that. Well, it's got to be something. She surely wouldn't just do this thing for no reason at all. It doesn't make sense. That's what I keep thinking over and over. It doesn't make sense. Well, charges or no charges, Charlie. I'm afraid you're in for a tough rap. <laughs> Will you have some coffee, Mr. Evans? No, thank you, Mrs. Carter. Very well. Then let's get down to business. I'm sure you know why you're here. I have a fair idea, yes. I understand you were acquitted of the charges against you. There were no charges, Mrs. Carter. Technically, no. I realized the charges were dropped. Yes, for lack of sufficient evidence, among other things. But, of course, the story is all over town. I don't hear all the gossip myself, but uh, I suppose so. It was uh, most unfortunate, I'm sure. I'm afraid we don't always abide by our own conviction that a man is innocent till proved guilty. Well, be that as it may, you understand that officially I have no authority regarding your contract with the high school. Yes, I understand. But as president of the Parents' Association, I do wield a certain amount of influence, shall we say. In other words, the Parents' Association could, if we deemed it suitable, bring pressure to bear on the school to buy up your contract. Yes. And uh, you deem it suitable? Don't put words in my mouth, Mr. Evans. I beg your pardon. I will admit I've given a good deal of thought to the matter. It's true that you are, legally at least, innocent. Still, in any situation involving our children, we have to be very careful. I'm sure that if you had a child, you're not married, I understand. No. I think you might well give that some thought. Still, that is beside the point for the moment. But if you had a child, I'm sure you would want that child under the influence of a teacher who is above suspicion. Mrs. Carter, if you ask me to come here so you could give me an analysis of my character... There is no need to be rude, Mr. Evans. I understand you have been through a rather trying experience. To put it mildly... So I will overlook that rudeness. I've asked you here, Mr. Evans, because of a remarkable experience I had this morning. Judy McIntyre came to see me. Judy? Judy came to see you? And she had some rather remarkable things to say to me. You mean she told you the truth? Several truths, Mr. Evans. I was so impressed by what she had to say. I asked her to be here this afternoon so you could hear for yourself. I think you'll be impressed, too. I hope so. I'll ask her to come in now. You may come in now, Judy. Mr. Evans is most anxious to hear what you have to say. Hello, Judy. Hello, Mr. Evans. I... I really... Don't know how to begin. Just begin the way you did this morning. There's nothing to be nervous about. Well, I... Well, like I said to Mrs. Carter this morning, I... I feel so bad about everything and all. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Judy. I'm sure that eventually we could straighten this thing out. Well, I... I, I figured maybe Mr. Williams, the principal, might think that you shouldn't go on teaching here. And if... Well, if he fired you, you'd really be in a jam. I mean, who else would want to hire you? even with the shortage of teachers and all. And like I said to Mrs. Carter, you're really a marvelous, I mean marvelous teacher, and, and you contribute so much to the school. And... Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I, I mean, well, it's true. And anyhow, I told Mrs. Carter that I thought they should let you stay on because, well, look at it this way, Mr. Evans. Wouldn't it really be better to stay here and just 
We'll just live this thing down and to try to go somewhere else when probably nowhere else would <laughs> have you. What? Well, I mean, since it would probably be on your record and all, or at least people would know. Judy. I mean, well, anybody can make a mistake, but if a person didn't mean to do it, then I think people should be fair about it and give him a chance to prove he didn't mean it. Judy, in the name of heaven, what are you trying to do to me? Mr. Evans, there is no need to shout. No need to shout? I think Judy is being most perceptive and most generous. And I, for one, find it refreshing indeed to see one of our teenage youngsters not behaving like the monsters they are so often pictured, but like the responsible young citizens we hope and know they are. Mrs. Carter... This responsible young citizen you see before you has for no reason I have been able to fathom falsely accused me of assaulting her. She has wrecked my career and ruined my reputation. And you expect me to get on my knees and thank her for her generosity? <laughs> Mr. Evans, nobody expects that. You must be insane. Or a little monster. Mr. Evans, I expect you to think before you speak. As I said before, I know you've been through a trying experience. But I strongly suggest that you pull yourself together. Judy is trying to help you. We are all trying to help you. I think it's time you started trying to help yourself. And that's the end of it? I sincerely hope it will be. And now, if you have nothing more to say, Mr. Evans? No, nothing. Then I think we may consider the matter settled. <laughs> Judy. Oh, Mr. Evans. Oh, golly. I really don't think people should see you with me. I, here in school, I mean. I mean. Judy, why? Why? Just, just tell me that. Listen, we shouldn't be talking right here in the hall, Mr. Evans. You should know better. Have I ever done anything to you? Offended you in some way? <laughs> Mr. Evans, of course not. Don't be a star. Why? See, Mr. Evans, I don't know. Does there have to be a why? Look, look, I gotta go now. The guys are waiting for me. And like I said, I, I don't think you and me are just the coolest combo right now. <laughs> Will you stop this insane giggling and give me a straight answer? Uh, I don't have any answer. <laughs> we were just looking for something crazy to do. Well, <laughs> we did it. <laughs> just like that? Well, yeah. Why me? Oh, Mr. Evans. <laughs> I, I know it doesn't sound as funny to you, but that's just what we said. Why, Mr. Evans? And then we said, why not? And that explains it. Well, sure. I mean, it wasn't anything personal, oh. honest. Judy, do you have any idea what you've done to me? Well, yeah, but I fixed everything up for you, didn't I? I, I mean, you don't have to thank me or anything. It was just the least I could do. You couldn't tell the truth. <laughs> Mr. Evans, honest, you're the most. <laughs> if I told the truth now, who would believe me? I mean, people would still think there must be something funny going on. They'd never believe we did this whole bit for no reason at all. I mean, I mean, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's what's so funny about it. I mean, <laughs> really funny that the truth doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> now, Judy, you're the one that doesn't make any sense. The truth makes a lot of sense. And your boyfriend still just told the truth. My lawyer had a hunch and put Phil on the spot. He told everything. I was just giving you one last chance to tell the truth before you tell it to a judge. Presented Nightmare, written by Francis Rickett and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Rosemary Rice, Stan Watts, George Baxter, Lorraine McMartin, Peter Fernandez, and George Petrie. Audio engineer, Bill Sandreuter. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. 
Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.